Now, the debate on whether euthanasia should be legalised in New Zealand is once again heating up as local and international campaigners gather in Wellington for a conference on the issue. It's an argument that provokes strong reactions and is bound to create fault lines in Parliament if a private member's bill to legalise it is drawn from the ballot. Adrian Taylor reports. It's a divisive question. Should euthanasia be legal in New Zealand? Of course, when it comes down to it, it's an individual's choice. I think it depends. It's really tricky. It's a, a troubling issue. In some cases, yes, definitely. Carefully planned, but yes. I wouldn't have a strong opinion, yes or no. I think it's a real can of worms. It's a can of worms that may soon be opened if Labour MP Marion Street has a newly submitted private members bill drawn from the ballot box. I think there are more people who want to be as self-determining at their end point as they have been during their life. And I, for one, don't think they should be told they can't be. She says her end-of-life choice bill would make it legal for those who are terminally ill or have an irreversible medical condition but are still mentally fit the right to choose to die and for assisting clinicians or family members to be protected from any liability. And she's confident she'll get the support of other MPs if the bill gets drawn. I'll personally be voting for it. Um, I think it should go to select committee. Um, I think that we should have the debate about it as a country. But that debate over whether someone should have the legal right to assisted death is a controversial one and there is strong opposition. There will not be a need for euthanasia. We believe that good palliative care goes a long way to reducing people's suffering because it focuses on um, People's, the people living rather than they're dying. Hospice New Zealand is hosting a public meeting tonight at the Paramount Cinema in Wellington. And although it opposes legalising euthanasia, it says the free meeting is about fostering debate from all points of view. Speakers include Marion Street and Barrius Finlay of Landaf, a prominent Welsh doctor who argues against euthanasia. They will discuss the ethical and legal crossroad that the issue creates. And it's a crossroad that's been discussed overseas too. In some European countries, euthanasia is legal. In the Netherlands, for example, it accounted for 2.8% of all deaths in 2010. But there's no evidence to suggest that that figure is any higher than before it was legalised in 2002. Adrian Taylor, 3 News. Now, uh, to look at the issue a little further and to investigate more palliative care and whether that's a better option, Dr Sinead Donnelly from the Australian and New Zealand Society of Palliative Medicine joins us. Uh, hello, uh, Doctor. Thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning, Rachel. Can you define for us, if you like, what uh, palliative care is? Uh, palliative care um, is the holistic care of people who are dying and the support of their family. So as doctors and nurses and a multidisciplinary team in palliative care, uh, we attend to the physical, emotional, social, spiritual, all components uh, to make sure that a person dies comfortably uh, with great dignity and that their family is supported in that process. And some people would absolutely welcome uh, that, to choose to have palliative care. Some would say though, uh, you know, let me die with dignity at a time and a place with which I and my family choose. Um, I am a ch the chair of the Association of Palliative Medicine Doctors in New Zealand representing about 70 doctors and with nurses and a multidisciplinary team throughout New Zealand we're looking after people on a daily basis and prov uh, providing, uh, caring for them and providing them with that dignity. We don't, uh, I, as an association we agree with the New Zealand Medical Association that it's unethical and wrong for a doctor uh, to um, deliberately end the life of a patient. Um, our role as doctors in palliative medicine and palliative care is to, to care for people and we can do that and achieve that. Uh, I've worked for about 21 years in palliative medicine uh, in different countries in the United States, Scotland, Ireland and now in New Zealand looking after about 400 people uh, each year uh, who are preparing to die uh, and who eventually die and from all that experience and the experience of all the doctors in our association uh, we see that it would it there's absolutely no it will not add to the comfort and care of patients who are dying the introduction of euthanasia potentially it will actually make our care that we provide in palliative care actually more difficult 
and it's it's a it's a such a divisive issue, uh, doctor. What I would suggest too is that towards the end of some terminal conditions. Um, that's an extremely distressing time for many uh, and many family members watching on when people are suffering or they do lose their dignity towards the end. Shouldn't people perhaps be given the right to choose how it is that they wish to end their life and be that heavily sedated under palliative care or be that actually at a time with which they choose, shouldn't they be given that right to choose? I, th I think from my lengthy experience in palliative medicine and looking after people who are dying that the choice they want is actually the choice to be cared for, uh, great security, comfort, uh, listened to carefully. They want to see, they want the choice of knowing that there's a service there that will look after their family. Uh, for, for a person who's dying to see their family distressed, it's distressing to them. So, and I am convinced, I know that palliative care, if it's of a high quality, provided uh, throughout the country in an integrated fashion and that that dignity can be provided to every pe person who is dying. Uh, Marion Street's bill um, doesn't just refer to people who uh, are dying in the near future, she refers also to people who have an irreversible a physical or mental condition. Um, that could be, you know, could be something like emphysema. Depression could be considered irreversible. Uh, chronic bronchitis, arthritis. Sure. Are these people also to be embraced within this option? I don't think that it takes away from palliative care, does it? If you look at the issue of, uh, say, in the Netherlands, where uh, there's a significant number of people who do choose uh, when they have a terminal illness. I mean, and obviously it has to be heavily um, legally governed, if you like. But people are choosing to uh, take their own life where they legally can. You say that you know they want actually to be looked after. Many don't. Many do want to call it a day when they're very, very ill. Well, Rachel, my experience, and I, I presume your experience isn't the same, but my experience of looking after about, as I said, that number of people for 21 years is not that they want an option for euthanasia. An example even is recently where an older man was dying and uh, he recovered slightly and the team, the medical team and nursing team were concerned about how much he would recover and they asked palliative care to be involved and I met this man and his family and the family indicated on the corridor oh, our father is a member of the Voluntary Euthanasia Society and so I brought up that up in the conversation very lightly uh, throughout the several hours that we spent on several days with this patient and his family and the patient because he was cared for supported, knew that his physical symptoms were being attended to, the social concerns that he had were being attended to. He had no interest in talking about euthanasia. Okay. We do have to leave it there. Dr Sinead Donnelly from the Australian and New Zealand Society of Palliative Medicine. Very much appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you.